Your brain has been infiltrated. Nah, I'm only kidding. But seriously, it has. I wanna ask you a question and I want you to take a few seconds to think about it. Okay, the question is this. Who knows you best? Okay, pause the video, take a few seconds to think about it. I'll wait. Okay, so if you're like most people, you probably thought of a best friend or maybe a partner or a family member. But I think that we can agree that the person that knows you best, knows you better than anyone else, is in actual fact, yourself. Now you know whether you like chocolate or vanilla, tea or coffee, Coke or Pepsi. You know your hopes and dreams. You know how you feel about big topics. You know who you've fallen in love with. And you have deep and intimate thoughts that no other single soul on earth knows. Well, that's beginning to change. For the last few hundred years, humans have worshipped a religion that is larger than any other in history. This religion places humans at the center of the universe, and quite uncreatively, the name of that religion is humanism. Humanism is the religion that tells us to think for ourselves and that we know best. It tells us to follow our hearts and feelings, and that these will provide us with the answers to life's big questions. Don't know whether you like someone or not? Listen to your heart. Stuck at a crossroads in your career? Go stand on a big cliff and think about it. You'll figure it out. And why shouldn't you? Up until this point in time, feelings have been the most effective tool to help you navigate through life. But feelings are essentially biochemical algorithms, all of which can be read, analyzed, and manipulated. For the last few hundred years, human feelings have been the highest authority in human decision-making. Before that, if people wanted answers to life's big questions, they had to read it in holy books or seek wise words from the gods. I will have my revenge. But the authority of feelings is now being challenged. So what do we do when something or someone knows us better than we know ourselves? Every single day, we're moving closer to a world in which this is the case. Humans by the masses are converting from humanism to the new religion that Yuval Harari calls dataism. What this basically means is that data and algorithms are replacing humans in their ability to make decisions. Right now, companies store massive amounts of data. Things like your location and your search queries. Now, from the way you interact on the internet, companies can get a pretty good idea of the kind of person that you are. They can deduce your likes and dislikes, your political affiliation, and even how you feel about certain topics. As we see now with Apple Watches and phones and other biotech products, companies and more particularly algorithms are starting to measure things like our heart rates, our brain activity, our sleeping patterns, and even our eye movements. Now, if this trend continues and this technology gets even better, let's say they can start reading our hormone levels and our brain chemicals, then the picture painted by these algorithms will be far better than anything that we could ever dream of painting ourselves. And it seems that this is the direction that we're heading in. We're trusting these algorithms more and more. You might be thinking to yourself, this sounds over the top or outrageous, but the truth is that humans blindly trust algorithms every single day. A good example is Google Maps. Imagine you're walking to Nonna's house and you want to stop by the fountain of youth along the way. You come to an intersection. Your map tells you to go one way, but you have a good feeling about the other. You decide to go with your gut and follow the other trail. And because of this, you end up getting mauled by some wild beasts. Next time, you face the same situation, but instead, you follow the route Google suggests and end up finding the sacred fountain of youth. Now already, even just that once, Google has gained a little bit of your trust. Now if you repeat this enough times, you'll find, as I'm sure many of you already have, that you can't drive anywhere, or in fact go anywhere, without having Google Maps or Apple Maps or some other geographic map in your pocket. And the reason for this is simple. It's because you believe that the decisions Google Maps will make are better than the ones you'll make yourself. Now of course, this is just the mundane task of walking or driving and just finding direction, but what do we do when this technology becomes more advanced? I think what people don't realize is that the combination of factors of blood pressure, heart rate, hormone levels, electrical activity, and brain chemicals, all of this combined together equals your feelings. With this detailed description of you and the vast amount of storage and all the data from everyone else in the world, these algorithms will end up making decisions far more crucial than which way to get to nonness. Life-changing questions such as who should I marry or what career path should I take may be left to the wisdom of computers rather than our feelings. But why would we give up our information to these algorithms in the first place? 
And why do we trust them so much? Now there are several reasons, but I think two sum it up pretty well. Number one, it's convenient and useful. And number two, FOMO. If you're seriously ill, you want a diagnosis that is extremely accurate with specific medicine tailored to you. When you read a book through Amazon, you want to read something you know will be perfectly suited to your likes and interests. When you're on YouTube, you want your feed to be full of exciting videos that seem to be exactly what you're in the mood for. All of these things can happen when we give up our information and trust the algorithms. People often resist change until they see others embrace it and realize all the benefits that they're missing out on. Perhaps every single piece of technology follows this trend. People take a while to adjust, but people eventually realize that emails are better than letters, computers are better than typewriters, and self-serve checkouts aren't actually that bad, so please stop complaining about them. The jury's still out on eBooks versus normal books, but the point is someone usually adopts technology first, gains benefits, and then everyone else has to play catch up. Because of this cycle, people eventually give up information and trust algorithms simply because it's too hard not to. Now you may be asking, is this a good thing or a bad thing? And in my own personal opinion, I don't think it's either. I think it's just a thing. Technology is never inherently evil. It's more about how we use it. Here are some possible advantages. Early interventions for procedures. For example, if data showed that you carried a gene for cancer and a high percentage of other people with that gene had died, you could act based on that information, as Angelina Jolie did. More convenient access to things that you enjoy. For example, better recommendations for books, movies, restaurants, partners, friends, and jobs that are all exclusively tailored to you. Here are some possible disadvantages. Governments tracking you and harming you if you demonstrate behavior that doesn't coincide with their views. Governments and companies using propaganda that is also exclusively tailored to you, increasing the chances of you being brainwashed to their cause. For example, igniting anger in you for a war effort, or bombarding you with products they know target your insecurities and interests. Sound familiar? As always, there are so many better examples and explanations in the book Homo Deus, written by Yuval Noah Harari. So please purchase this book, or at least borrow it, because this is perhaps the most eye-opening book I've ever read, and it definitely is my favorite. And I wanna finish by saying that this video is not a doomsday prophecy. We tend to focus on negative things because we've been biologically wired to do so. But the linking of biotech and infotech might actually be one of the best things that ever happened to humanity. It just depends on whether we're prepared and make good decisions. And at least we'll have algorithms to help us do that. Ironic, isn't it?